What's up guys, Kudokun here, and yet another Nintendo Direct has been laid at our doorstep. Lots of very exciting announcements this time around, and I really like just talking into the microphone, so <laughs> I think I might make this a regular occurrence. So I watched the Direct on my way home, and conveniently there's a list of everything that was announced in the Direct, so we're just going to go through one by one, and I'm going to give my thoughts. First up on the 3DS side is WarioWare Gold, and, uh, I mean, are we really doing this, Nintendo? I'm not trying to put down WarioWare or anything, but why the 3DS? Why are you guys still pouring so much life into the 3DS? If you're going to release it here, at least, at least also put it on the Switch. What is WarioWare? It's a simplistic party game. What was the Switch advertised as? A great system to bring to parties. You bring your Switch to a party, you shouldn't need any other controllers, you just give somebody some Joy-Cons and everybody has a good time. Putting this on the 3DS is kinda useless. Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers. Not gonna lie, this game looks kind of awesome. It's a sort of action-style tower defense game, and you don't see a whole lot of those. In fact, the last one I think I really remember is... Locks Quest on the DS, I think it was called? But these kinds of games look like a lot of fun. I am hoping for couch co-op multiplayer, but we'll see. Bowser's Inside Story Remake seems fine. Uh, I don't think it's quite as necessary as the Superstar Saga was. See, I understood Superstar Saga because it was a Game Boy Advance game, and you can't play Game Boy Advance games on your 3DS, but you can play DS games on your 3DS, so... You can still go out and buy Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, pop it into your 3DS, and play it just fine. I'm happy that they're adding the new story mode where you can see things through Bowser Jr., but I'm just not as excited for this as I was Superstar Saga. I, I still own Bowser's Inside Story. I can still play it right now, so I'll check it out for the new content, but it it's okay. Detective Pikachu, I don't even need to say anything about Detective Pikachu, okay? You give me Pokemon, you give me detectives, I'm crazy about both of those things, I think this game is going to be amazing. Still not crazy about the voice on Detective Pikachu though, uh, I really wish they had just hammed it up all the way and maybe tried to do like a bad Sherlock Holmes impression for it or something. Kind of like the English voice actor for Richard Moore in Case Closed, that's sort of the voice I would have liked, but it's okay. The thing I will talk about though is the amiibo. I get that it's bigger. I get that it's almost double the size of a regular Amiibo, but they want $30 for this thing. I'm sorry, guys. I just cannot justify three times the price for a slightly bigger Amiibo. And it sucks, because I would really like to have this one, okay? This is actually one of the Amiibo I would love to add to my collection, but $30, man, I cannot do it. I can't do a $30 toy. Luigi's Mansion Remake? Perfect. But again... This just sort of brings up the uh, keeping the 3DS alive too long thing, where I would really, really prefer this on my Switch. Hopefully they do also port this to the Switch so I don't have to get it on 3DS, because I'm probably not going to actually spend money on it if it's on the 3DS. Just got to cross our fingers on this one. Give me a Switch port and my money is yours. Kirby Star Allies got some new info. Uh, I'm so conflicted about it. I love Kirby games, alright? Don't get me wrong. But of all of Nintendo's properties, Kirby is the one with the least amount of variety and substance. If you like one Kirby game, you'll probably like every single Kirby game until you get tired of it. If you played a Kirby game and you didn't like it, then there's not a single Kirby game out there that will change your mind. And this one looks good, and the idea of just handing a Joy-Con off to somebody and having them go through the multiplayer with me, especially with Bandana D and Meta Knight and... King DDD and all the other animals that they announced, it seems like a good time. Is it $60 worth of a good time? Well, alright, let's back up for a second. I don't mind the 3DS Kirby games because they are $40, and I think $40 is reasonable for how high of a quality we're getting with these Kirby games, but I just don't know if $60 for a Kirby game is gonna fly, not today. Like, I think even the biggest Kirby fans in the world have to take a second look at themselves and really ask themselves deep down if $60 for a Kirby game on your Switch is going to be worth it. If it is for you, then hey man, that's great. I'm glad you're getting what you want, but uh, unless I can find this game for $40 somewhere, I sadly won't be enjoying it. Okami HD on the Switch, very excited about this, and I'll tell you guys why. So first of all, just having it portable is going to be great. I know we technically had a portable Okami because we had the DS one, but 
just having a game of this quality that is portable that I can show to people who haven't heard of it before is amazing. Secondly, Okami's been doing really well recently. I think, don't quote me on this, this is all speculation, but I think the company behind Okami is doing their best to get an Okami 2 to happen. There have been an HD port just coming out of every single console recently. It's been selling relatively well. I think Okami 2 is trying desperately to happen, and I think the Switch is the place that it's going to happen if it does. It's gonna be another Bayonetta, folks. And please, please can we get Okami in Smash. Sushi Striker, ugh, the way of Sushido. Oh god, disgusting. Like, it's not bad enough that sushi is the worst food that mankind has ever created. But this game looks like something I could download on my phone for free, and I don't even think I would play it if it were on my phone for free. It's shovelware. If it's more than $5, don't buy it, okay? Just don't even support it if it's more than $5. More Octopath Traveler news, and it's fine. Uh, I really feel like all of the Octopath stuff that they keep announcing doesn't really help the game. Like, we've already got the demo, we've already got a taste of it, we've seen what the world's gonna look like, we've seen what the stories are gonna play like, we've seen what the battle system's like. I feel like they could just sort of keep the rest of the stuff a surprise until the game is released. They did say during this section that they made a few minor tweaks to the game based on feedback that they got from players during the demo, but they didn't actually say what any of those tweaks were, so I can't be that excited about it. For anybody who might have missed my video on it, uh, the demo for Octopath Traveler actually really disappointed me. I'm still looking forward to the game. I'm not going to put down the game at all. I think the game is going to be really fun. Uh, I'm very excited to play it, but the demo did not impress me at all. I don't feel like any of the information they announced is really changing my opinions of the game at all. I guess the one kind of interesting thing about it is the last female character they introduced was Primrose and everybody got all up in a hizzy over it because she's like a female dancer. And now we've got a female merchant to shut all of those people up and she's wearing a formal dress and she's got a giant backpack and she's not showing any skin at all so hopefully people will just get off of their case. New No More Heroes game, not a No More Heroes fan. It's okay. I played a little bit of the first game, and I certainly didn't hate it, but uh, I, I, don't, I definitely can't call myself a fan of the series. Will this new one change my mind? Probably not, honestly. Of all of the No More Heroes games I've seen, this actually looks like the worst one. I know some people are going to come out and defend it and say, oh, but kudo, you don't understand. It, this isn't like the other ones. It's like more arcadey, and it's got more gameplay modes. That's fine. It still doesn't look good. I would say, hey, if you're a No More Heroes fan, then uh, at least you get to enjoy it. But honestly, it doesn't even look like the game is made for fans of No More Heroes. It just seems like they're trying desperately to do something with the No More Heroes franchise. And they're just sort of throwing something at the wall and hoping it sticks, especially with all the different gameplay modes and stuff. But I think it would have been better if they had just had the balls to come out and make a No More Heroes game for the Switch. This isn't a No More Heroes game. It is a game loosely based on No More Heroes. Dark Souls Remastered, I'm not going to buy it. I've already got it on the PS3. I've got it on the PC. The one benefit I could possibly have from getting it on the Switch is being able to play it portably. And I really don't know if I want a super hard game like Dark Souls on the go. Honestly, I don't even know how it's going to work with the fact that you can turn the Switch on and off. Because... Like, the entire reason you couldn't pause in the game before was because it was a very network-reliant game. So I don't know how it's going to work now with you being able to just put your uh, your Switch in standby mode or take it off of the dock and take it on the go. I mean, I guess by now they would have figured out a way to toggle the network options on and off, but it just seems like a really weird concept to me. If you haven't gotten into Dark Souls, though, and this game is going to be your very first one on the Switch, then I'm extremely happy for you. It's a great series, and you're finally going to get to know what everybody else in the world is talking about. But we all know that the game is not the most interesting thing about this announcement. No, a meme became a Nintendo Amiibo. I don't even know what to say, guys. We really worked hard for this one. Uh, congratulations to everybody. Good luck getting your hands on one, though. I am absolutely positive these are going to be sold out forever, especially with Nintendo's 
uh, lack of understanding as to how many of these things to make and how many to actually ship out to stores, they're probably going to make like four of them, even though I'm sure there are literally hundreds of thousands of people out there that are going to want one of these. Scalpers are going to buy all of these up from all of the stores, they're going to sell them for $50, $60 a pop, and meme lords are going to buy the crap out of them. If you really want one, you might have to bite the bullet and pre-order one at GameStop or something, because you're not going to find one in the wild. It's just not going to happen. Mario Aces, it looks good. I mean, I'll be completely honest here. It looks like a really good game. I mean, we all know it was a cover from the real announcement that we'll get onto at the end of the video, but still, I think it looks like a really, really well-made game. Am I going to buy it? No, no, certainly not. I have had my fill of Mario Tennis on the N64. I don't think I'll ever buy another Mario Tennis game unless I can find it dirt cheap somewhere. I'm talking $20 or less. If this thing costs $20 and one cent, I'm not buying it, okay? But if you're into this kind of thing or if you never got a chance to play any of the original Mario Tennis games, you should definitely look at it. It looks really good. Probably my favorite addition is the fact that you can actually break people's tennis rackets now, I think that adds a new level of depth to the game. It's going to be really, really interesting to see how competitive these games get online, especially with the fact that matches can be 2v2. I think teams for Mario Tennis is going to be just a really, really exciting thing to watch. I hope Nintendo gets on the hype train of streaming so that we can actually get people streaming this game, because I think it's going to be really interesting. New Captain Toad Treasure Trackers content coming to the Switch version. Eh. That's about all I can say is eh. I'm not upset about it. It was a pretty decent little time waster on the Wii U. If you didn't get a chance to play it on the Wii U, now is your chance to play it. But am I excited for it? No, not even a little. Undertale on the Switch. Very, very good showing. This is a weird one for me because I'm probably not going to play it, but I will probably still buy it because I know this is a really uncool thing to say here in 2018. It was a really uncool thing to say in 2017 too, but I am in the camp of people that believes that Undertale actually was a masterpiece of a game. I know guys, I'm scum, I'm normie trash, but I legitimately had feelings over this game and uh, I, I'm just really excited about it being on every console imaginable. My only thing is though, I still, I cannot wrap my head around how this game is going to work on something that isn't a PC. For those who don't know anything about Undertale and are planning on getting it, I will try not to spoil anything for you, but... There are things that this game does that make sense because it is on a computer. Uh, it's a very meta game, and I don't understand how those same things are going to translate onto a console like the Switch. Like, I guess I could see maybe a possibility of them using some of the Switch's features to, uh, to subvert some expectations, but man, I just don't know. Like, I'm sitting here wrapping my brain around it, and I just, I can't. I can't see it. Regardless, though, every time I see it, I'm going to throw my money at it. Can't wait to see what the creator does next. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy on the Switch. I'm a little excited for this. So this means a couple of things. First off, Nintendo kind of lied in their direct. I think this was a mistranslation, but they said at one point that uh, this is the first time that Crash Bandicoot has had a game on a Nintendo console. That's a lie. Anybody who has had a Game Boy Advance knows that it's a lie. If they meant these games in particular, then oh yeah, that, that's true. None of the original Crash Bandicoot games have been on a Nintendo console, but I mean, come on, come on. Anybody who has a Game Boy Advance knows that's a lie. I passed on these games on the PS4, but I mean, honestly, if it's a reasonable price on the Switch, if I can get it for like 30 maybe pushing it $40, then... I think I'm actually going to get it. So on to what makes this so cool. Firstly, I want to say that there's a chance, okay, there is a slim possibility that they are doing with this what I said they were doing with Okami, where they're trying to make Crash Bandicoot 4 a reality, and if they are and they're having trouble, I think the Nintendo is the savior that can pick up the franchise, give them what they need, and we can get a Crash 4 going. I'm hyped, okay? I'm just, I'm so hyped for all of these, these games that didn't get proper sequels that I wanted sequels to that have this new chance through Nintendo. 
And then, of course, everybody knows what the big announcement at the end of the Direct was, okay? Don't sit there and pretend like you didn't know. Uh, They're announcing a new Smash Brothers. Crash for Smash, man. Crash for Smash 2018. Little Nightmares. I already have the Steam version, but let me just say that if you've never heard of this game before, or if you've heard of this game but you didn't actually pick it up, you should be excited for this on the Switch. It's a pretty fun game, and it's really interesting. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. As far as horror games go, we haven't really had very many good horror games be released lately. Little Nightmares is one of the good horror games that I think, if you're a fan of the genre, you should be very excited for. I can understand it not doing too well on Steam because there's just so much more competition, but like, what other horror games are you playing on your Switch right now? Definitely keep an eye on it. It's a good one. South Park Fractured But Whole on the Switch. Uh, it's, that's fine, I guess. I would really rather just play this on my PC, so I'm not that interested. The thing that does make this interesting, though, is I'm just, I'm really, really pleased with the way Nintendo has been handling things like this recently. When the Switch came out, uh, obviously, Nintendo was the first console that hosted the Senra and Kagura games, and they moved to a different console, and then Nintendo brings out a Japanese-only Senran Kagura game that has full-on breast mechanics, that you can dress a girl up, you can give her a massage, uh, all of this really sexual stuff that you would never have seen on the Wii or the Wii U. And then, of course, Xenoblade 2 comes out, and they didn't censor any of the outfits. They didn't censor the way any of the girls looked. They did censor some of the dialogue, but the stuff that they censored in the dialogue was stuff that actually made a lot of sense. And then after embracing sexuality, it seems like they've embraced violence and really hardcore mature rated games with Doom, and they got Skyrim in there, and you've even got a game where Mario can use a gun now. Of course, it's not a real gun, but baby steps, baby steps. And now with a game like South Park coming out that has a very crude humor, it seems like Nintendo is finally ready to let grown-up gamers be grown-up gamers on their console. And, you know, this isn't for everybody, obviously. Uh, there are some people out there that are going to be very, very turned off by the idea of sexualized girls in games, or of very violent games, or very crude games like South Park, but I think just embracing that stuff on a Nintendo console just makes the community better as a whole because it gives everybody a little bit of something that they want. Even if you don't like this stuff, you're standing side by side by gamers who maybe might want some of this stuff, so everybody ends up happy, I think. Hyrule Warriors? Nah, man. Nah. Nah. Not again. Nope. Nope. I'm good. I have the Wii U version, I have the 3DS version, and you know what? I think I'm okay. If this were like the only game of its kind that were on the Switch, then I might have slightly different opinions of it, but bros, we have Fire Emblem, we have Gintama, we have Azure Knights. I understand that this game is good, and it's one of the best Mushu games out there, but man, man, I just can't do it a third time, guys. I'm sorry. If you happen to be, like, the one person out there who hasn't played it yet, then go for it. But by the time it comes out, you'll be able to get Fire Emblem for, like, I don't know, a half of the price. So if I were to tell you to get this instead of Fire Emblem Heroes... I'd feel kind of bad because I feel like you could get pretty much the same experience on Fire Emblem Heroes, and because it came out later in the uh, the Mushu franchise's lifespan, you're actually going to get more features in Fire Emblem Heroes too. So I don't know, man. Go for it if you want to, I guess, but I'm going to take a hard pass. Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. So let me explain something to you guys about me. I have pretty much no interest in Splatoon 2. None. None whatsoever. I have Splatoon for the Wii U, and now that everybody's got hacked Wii U's, everybody goes on and plays it online and has a really good time, and that is about where my interest in Splatoon ends. But, but, I will admit, this Octo expansion does have my interest peaked. I probably won't get it until after some info has been released on it or after it's already come out and maybe some people have reviewed it and I can look over it, but this Octo expansion thing might actually be the tipping point in making me get Splatoon 2. I don't know, man. It looks really good. And that music, oh my gosh, the music that they played in the trailer is just fire. 
All right, and here it is. It's it's the big one, boys. It's the one that I did not think we would be seeing until the end of the year, but it is happening right now. Super Smash Brothers is coming to the Switch. Not only is it coming to the Switch. No, 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 no. Nintendo won up to us by announcing that it was coming to the Switch this year. Unless something major happens, I do not see this game being pushed until 2019. I think if they've announced for sure it's coming out this year, it's because they planned it to be out this year. I mean, let's get the cynicism out of the way real quick. Uh, it's quite the coincidence that this game is coming out this year, and they've already started talking about, you know, Nintendo Online and how we're going to have to pay for it soon, but I digress. Just seems like some uh, interesting timing there, if you know what I mean. So Smash on the Switch, uh, this really just really blew me away. I, I I can't even, I don't even know what to say about it. It's going to be Smash on the Switch. I was wanting a port of the one we got on the Wii U and the 3DS, and they're going to blow all of that away by giving us a brand new one. A few concerns. One, I hope that it plays like the one on the Wii U, because I think that they have finally found a winning formula for the series where it is not so fast you have to be a god at it like melee but it's also not so slow that it's not fun for anybody like brawl if they could find a way to keep the exact same pace they have for the 3ds and the wii u then i'm going to be completely happy with the game just give me some more characters and that's another thing are we gonna have to sacrifice any characters for the move you can say no if you want to but there's a very real chance that they will have to get rid of a few of the characters I'd say maybe 5 to 10-ish of the characters they gave us on the Wii U and the 3DS versions to make room for some new characters on the new one. Man, I hope not, though. Oh, God, please. Please let me keep Shulk. I am begging you, Nintendo. Just let me have Shulk. I kind of still want Ryu and Cloud and Bayonetta, too. I want, I want all of them, okay? I want all of them, but of all the characters that I played in Smash Brothers, Shulk is like my favorite all-time character of any game, so please just let me keep him, and then, you know, if you have room for more wishes, uh, I'd really like to keep Cloud and Ryu and Bayonetta. And one more thing, if I could if I could be so bold, let me just get down on one knee here real quick, Nintendo. <sighs> please, please give me the Ice Climbers back. I didn't even use them for what made them so broken, okay? I didn't, I didn't chain grab. I didn't do any of the broken stuff. I just, I love them because they're so adorable. They'd better be here, Nintendo. I'm going to be very, very unhappy if they're not. For character predictions, uh, because they're already announcing some HD ports on the Switch, I think at least one of them is going to show up. Uh, Okami and Crash are sort of at the top of my list right now. I think one of them is going to make an appearance. Because you guys have to remember, when Nintendo ports a game over to the Switch, it's not like they're just bringing the game over and not talking to the developers about it. No. Nintendo is in a line of communication with the developers when stuff like this happens, so chances are the idea of one of their characters appearing in a Smash Brothers game has at least come up. I'd also like to point out that Amaterasu from Okami has already been in a fighting game in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so... There's a, there's a very real chance that it could happen. So one more very interesting thing about the trailer was they showed Link, and Link looks like he's in his Breath of the Wild outfit, so here's what I want out of Link. Now, I love Link. I think he's a very fun character to play in Smash, but I think it's time for him to grow up now. I think Breath of the Wild Link should be the new Link, and I think... They should just leave Link's old moveset with Toon Link. I, I just don't like the fact that Toon Link and Adult Link play so similarly. I know some Smash snobs out there are going to be like, Oh no, Kudo, they're completely different. You don't understand. Their, their movesets have totally different use cases. I don't care, okay? They're too similar. They're too similar to be good in the game. So I think they should just leave Toon Link alone. Let that be the legacy of Link over the years and be Breath of the Wild Link come in with a new moveset that just really blows us away. Link is such a diverse character with this huge arsenal of just stuff that he's acquired. He's got all these skills and all these abilities and all these tools. He doesn't need to be 
just the bombs are B down and the bow and arrow and the boomerang guy anymore. He can have more, and I think he is. Honestly, I could go on forever talking about Smash Brothers on the Switch because I am just so hyped. As soon as this game gets available for pre-order, I'm pre-ordering it. And I know that we're not really supposed to pre-order games anymore, but I just can't help myself, man. I love Smash to death. We're getting Smash on the go, and we can hand a Joy-Con off to somebody to have a match with them anywhere we want to. And if you're lucky enough to have Wi-Fi from your phone or through a tether, then you can literally now play Smash Brothers anywhere in the entire world, baby. You can be walking to the store, set up the tether on your phone, and all of a sudden you have access to Smash Brothers online. I know you can technically do it on the 3DS, but yeah, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play some competitive Smash with the Circle Pad, okay? Let's all play competitive Circle Pad Smash, you guys. But anyways, I think that's going to be about it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. Those things really do help us out. Leave me your thoughts on the direct in the comment section below. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. <sighs> it's going to be a bright year, Nintendo fans. I can feel it.